In the realm of mountaineering, where summiting the highest peak on Earth is the pinnacle of achievement, a select few seek to redefine the limits of this daring pursuit. These intrepid individuals forsake the safety of oxygen masks, embark on perilous routes, and challenge themselves without the guidance of a seasoned expert. Yet they all share a common thread. They ascend and descend solely on foot. However, the narrative of mountaineering underwent a paradigm shift on September 8, 2002, thanks to one man Marco C. Freddy, a 23-year-old mountaineer and snowboarder hailing from Chimoni, France. Standing atop the mighty Everest, he savored the breathtaking moment, gazing down at the expansive canvas of ice and snow below. Unveiling his audacious plan, Marco prepared to undertake the unthinkable to snowboard down from the Everest summit to the base camp, navigating one of the most treacherous trails. Bidding farewell to the Sherpas who had guided him on the ascent, he embarked on this unprecedented adventure, oblivious to the looming tragedy that awaited him. This is the riveting tale of Marco's extraordinary journey. Meet Marco C. Freddy, born on May 22, 1979, in the picturesque town of Shimoni, surrounded by the awe-inspiring grandeur of mountains. Growing up amidst this natural beauty, Marco developed an early passion for skiing and snowboarding. The Shimoni Mountains, renowned for their challenging terrain, had earned a reputation as a hub for extreme skiing and snowboarding, even hosting the inaugural Winter Olympics in 1924. In this alpine haven, local legends like John Mark Bova and Bruno Garvey, famed for their audacious skiing exploits, became Marco's inspiration. Undeterred by the daunting reputation of the north face of the Igwe de Medici in the Mont Blanc area, Marco set his sights on conquering its challenging slopes. On June 17, 1996, he defied naysayers, waking up with determination, grabbing his snowboard, and embarking on the arduous journey to the mountains. Seven hours later, Marco stood atop the summit, ready to execute his audacious descent. What followed was a daring trail. Navigating the challenging terrain without strapping his snowboard even once, a feat that adhered to the stringent rules defining a legitimate performance. Astonishingly, just a year after picking up snowboarding, Marco achieved another milestone, successfully descending the Mallory route on the north face of the revered Agreed Committee. After conquering the Mallory route on the north face of the Agreed Committee, a daunting descent of about 1,100 meters with steep and rocky passages at a 55-degree incline, the fearless 19-year-old Marco C. Freddy became the talk of his town. News of the audacious teenager, who fearlessly tackled the seemingly impossible spread rapidly, solidifying his reputation as a daring pioneer in extreme skiing and snowboarding. But for Marco, this was just the beginning. His appetite for challenges was insatiable, and he continued to shine in the world of extreme sports, consistently achieving impressive first ascents. Despite accolades for his remarkable feats, Marco's ambitions soared higher. The next frontier beckoning him was none other than the iconic Mount Everest. His father, Felipe, recognizing Marco's determination, connected him with Russell Bryce, a seasoned mountaineer and owner of a company specializing in Everest expeditions. After a series of conversations, Russell saw the potential in Marco to undertake the unprecedented descent of Everest, even if it meant conquering eight other formidable mountains before reaching the pinnacle. Without much hesitation, Marco sealed the deal, and over the next few years he diligently worked at his family's campsite to amass the funds necessary for this ambitious expedition. During his rise to stardom, Marco became an idol in his hometown conquering all the nearby summits by June 1999. One of his most remarkable feats was the first snowboard descent of Nam, a coveted 1,000-meter route with an average inclination of 55 degrees and sections reaching up to 60 degrees. The route hadn't seen a repeat since Jean-Marc Wellen's epic descent in 1989, and Marco's daring accomplishment was immortalized in René Roberts' breathtaking photos. Having mastered the challenges of Shimoni, Marco set his sights on the 19,800-foot-tall Idaho in Peru. Before embarking on the journey, he received a small cross from the mother of a friend, a talisman that would accompany him on every subsequent expedition. From Peru, Marco ventured to Nepal, successfully descending Dorje Lhakpa at an elevation of almost 30,000 feet. The next stop was Georgia, 
where he conquered a peak rising approximately 27,000 feet above sea level. His triumphant descent of Tokyo U in 2000 was the final confirmation he needed before setting his sights on the ultimate challenge. Standing at the summit of Mount Everest in 2001, Marco envisioned making history by becoming the first person to snowboard down from the highest point on Earth. His original plan involved descending via the horn through a couloir, but upon reaching the mountain, he faced the harsh reality of insufficient snow on the windy summit, forcing him to reconsider his route. Forced to alter his descent route due to insufficient snow on the summit, Marco chose the Norton Couloir as an alternative. On May 23, 2001, equipped with oxygen and aided by Sherpas delivering essential supplies to the summit, Marco, adorned with his talisman, prepared for the unprecedented descent. Despite facing challenges like cracks developing on his snowboard due to extreme cold, a resourceful Sherpa managed to secure it with a harness rope. Undeterred, Marco focused on the monumental task that had been the culmination of his entire life. Taking a deep breath, he plunged into the abyss, skillfully navigating around climbers ascending the mountain. Racing down the initial 5,900 feet of the couloir, Marco took a brief break to regain strength before smoothly completing the rest of the descent. Within two hours, he reached the advanced base camp, marking the first recorded snowboard descent of Mount Everest, covering an uninterrupted 3,000 meters on slopes ranging from 40 to 45 degrees. At the age of 22, Marco achieved a monumental feat, becoming the first person to descend Mount Everest on a snowboard. Despite the acclaim and recognition, he harbored a sense of restlessness. Unsatisfied with the deviation from his original plan, Marco aimed for a second descent, this time determined to conquer the more perilous and unpredictable bean couloir via the horn. Driven by an unrelenting determination to conquer the hornbine couloir, Marco set his sights on attempting the descent in September 2000, hoping for better snow conditions. The meticulous planning required perfect timing, with the couloir covered by just the right amount of snow to facilitate a successful descent. However, logistical challenges, financial constraints, and the looming threat of fatal failure consistently impeded the progress of the team. Despite the setbacks, Marco departed Shimoni for the last time on August 8, 22. In a surprising twist, he forgot to bring his lucky pendant with the cross. Arriving in Kathmandu, he met his fellow partner, Fair and Dar Tenzing, three Sherpas crucial to his journey towards the summit. After a week of travel, Marco reached the base camp situated at an altitude of 5,000 meters. The following morning, the team participated in a puja, a Buddhist ceremony offering prayers, food, drink, and incense to seek the blessings of deities for a safe expedition. As the puja concluded, the clouds dispersed, unveiling the first glimpse of Mount Everest. Marco, equipped with a telescope, examined the north face and was delighted to observe ample snow covering the slopes. In the following days, the team stayed at base camp to acclimate, with Marco leading a reconnaissance mission to the base of the North Wall. Upon reaching the advanced base camp, they faced challenges during their initial approach to the Northern Mountain Pass, forcing a retreat due to adverse weather conditions. Marco struggled with high-altitude acclimation, battling headaches as they ascended. Despite these setbacks, their determination prevailed, reaching high camp at 8,300 meters. Unfavorable mountain conditions, marked by avalanches and melting ice, consistently thwarted their plans for a swift ascent. Every attempt was hindered by unforeseen circumstances. When a clear weather forecast emerged on Sunday, September 8th, Marco seized the opportunity, ecstatic about his chance to reach the summit. However, during a phone call with his friend John Marcos, use of the term adieu, indicating a farewell with potential fatality, raised concerns. Despite the ominous exchange, Marco dismissed it and proceeded with plans to climb the summit. He also called his friend Bertram to share his progress in the favorable mountain conditions. Despite facing challenges, Marco felt strong and confident on his ascent. Unfortunately, the satellite phone batteries depleted, leaving Marco and the Sherpas isolated in the harsh mountain environment without any means of communication. Completely isolated and vulnerable, the group initiated the climb on September 7th, swiftly ascending to the death zone at 26,000 feet by the 8th. 
Despite the exhaustion from the challenging 12.5-hour climb, reaching the summit of Mount Everest brought unparalleled euphoria and a sense of accomplishment. For Marco, the summit was merely a stepping stone towards his ultimate goal, completing the mountain's first uninterrupted snowboard descent. Despite the Sherpas sensing an impending storm and attempting to dissuade Marco, he remained resolute. Having waited for this moment for what felt like an eternity, he faced the hornbine with unwavering determination, ready to fulfill his dream with 3,000 meters of pristine snow awaiting him. As Marco commenced his descent at 3.15 p.m., brimming with determination, the Sherpas witnessed him disappearing into the mountain light along the slope of the horn. Descending to the northern mountain pass, they were startled to witness a mysterious figure gliding down the mountain, seemingly defying their belief that they were the sole occupants of the mountain. Reaching the location where they spotted the enigmatic figure, they found no trace of Marco or his snowboard tracks. The realization struck them. He must have met his demise. News of Marco reaching the summit reached Shimoni, sparking the belief that he had already completed the descent and was back at base camp. However, the absence of any communication or celebratory message raised concerns. Olivia Bessel, witnessing Marco's initial descent, lacked confirmation as he had no means of communication. By the time the Sherpas reached base camp, the community was abuzz with the news that the young snowboarder had not returned. He did not return as expected near the end of September 8th, his anticipated arrival time. Even on the 9th and 10th, no word from him reached base camp. The ominous reality lingered. Surviving a night on Everest at such extreme temperatures was nearly impossible and often meant a death sentence. Upon learning of Marco's disappearance, Russell Bryce immediately embarked on a search. Marco's distinctive yellow jumpsuit should have made him easily identifiable in the snow. However, weeks passed without any trace of him or his snowboard. The search yielded no results, and a month after his disappearance, a memorial was held for Marco. His family, girlfriend Stephanie and close friends attended, grappling with the absence of any clues about his fate. Numerous theories circulated, and speculation ran rampant, but the truth remained elusive. Marco's mysterious disappearance dealt a devastating blow to the climbing and snowboarding communities. A trailblazer in his field, he had redefined the limits of what was deemed possible on the mountain. Despite the uncertainty surrounding his fate, Marco's spirit and legacy endure, inspiring future generations of climbers and snowboarders to pursue their dreams and conquer new heights.